in this video we are going to make some lead acetate and this all by itself is pretty neat but I plan on using the lead acetate for another experiment later where we'll be making lead crystals. The materials that we need are glacial acetic acid hereafter known as ACOH which is an acceptable notation. We need 55 grams by weight, water 55 grams by weight, and lead oxide 50 grams. These two are to make a 50% solution of acetic acid by weight and of course this one is to be added at the very end. So for our methods the first thing we do is put our water in a beaker. I use a stirring rod just to accelerate the process of mixing and poured in the glacial acetic acid until it was mixed really well. Then I poured in the lead oxide slowly because this creates quite a bit of heat when the lead oxide goes in and continued to mix it in the 50% acetic acid solution until all the lead oxide was dissolved. At this point, I plan on uh, filtering it just in case some of the lead oxide is still in there. Um, you don't want any solids in the solution and if you filter it you'll end up with a pure lead acetate solution and it's just a matter of time of waiting until your crystals will form. If they don't form scratching the glass will help or just waiting until enough of the water that's still in here evaporates until the crystals start to form. It's really straightforward so let's go ahead and do it. To start making our 50% acetic acid solution by weight we're going to start with 55 grams of water. Something interesting about glacial acetic acid is that it turns into a solid below 63 degrees Fahrenheit. So this is rock hard and also it's flammable. And after I melted it, 55 grams of pure acetic acid. And our final ingredient in making our lead acetate is a 50 grams of lead oxide. Making our 50% acetic acid solution, I'm pouring the water in first. And... I'll slowly be pouring this in, the uh, acetic acid, while this is gently turning here. Adding the lead oxide will cause this to heat up a bit. You don't need any additional heat in any of this process right here. All the lead oxide has been added it's almost all dissolved the lead acetate is forming in the solution so when we're done here and filter it it's a solution that we're going to be saving so I have the lead acetate solution right here and i'm going to filter it through regular filter paper coffee filter paper into a wider one liter beaker because as the crystals form i want to be able to get them out easily it's done filtering and I did that just to make sure that any undissolved uh, lead oxide would uh, be taken care of. So here's our pure lead acetate solution. This is about two hours later. I was messing around with some other things here and just came back and looked at it. And the lead acetate has completely formed. That's pretty quick, but hey, that's great. So I'm going to filter this to collect the uh, solids. Okay, so... I'm just going to be scraping out all the stuff in here, of course, because it's super, super, super straightforward. And uh, filtering it, it's going to take some time. Crystals are kind of cool. They're long and sharp, like needle-like. You can see that, I hope, on the bottom of this. Well, it's not really, maybe you can't. But yeah, I'll, I'm sure when it dries up, you'll be able to, to see those crystal structures. So you can see from this a little bit some of the spiky needle-like crystals that are everywhere. I think it's why it's stacked on itself so nicely like that. The lead acetate's completely dried. It's kind of a funky, chunky looking substance here. The final pile of lead acetate dried and crushed.